Hello, Bournemouth fans. Hope you're doing well this Thursday. Bournemouth today have announced the capture finally of Rodrigo Raquelme from Atletico Madrid. Whether he's going to be involved tomorrow, probably a bit too soon, but we're playing Coventry. It's live on Sky and with me to talk all things AFCB today is a name you know. It's Tom Jordan. How are you? Hello, mate. Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, good news this afternoon about uh, Raquel Maye. Yeah, nice to get that one over the line. Obviously, it seems to have happened quite quickly. We only just linked. Um, obviously, knew he was kind of training with Redding or whatever. So, uh, come a bit out of the blue. But yeah, excited to see what he's about. He seems like the type of player we need anyway, without knowing too much about him. Yeah, and uh, he's. Uh, it just shows that we still got pulling power because there were some clubs that were interested in him, according to some press reports. Yeah, I saw. Um, obviously, we knew Reading, but then I saw uh, Celtic and Ajax. I think were were two of the clubs mentioned. Were, you know, obviously big football clubs. So JT's obviously sold the club well. Um, don't know whether that's a game time thing or a style of football. You know, will, remains to be seen. But either way, JT's got it over the line. So yeah, excited about it. And uh, brilliant to see photos with him uh, posing with uh, Neil Blake on Twitter there. He just looks so young, doesn't he? But I've seen some of his clips on uh, YouTube and uh, you know what? He could be a star of the future. There's also uh, photos of him with um, with JT. This is from uh, Twitter there, uh, looking looking very youthful and uh, walking in front of the uh, Ted McDougall stand as well. Now, He's posing with JT there. Doesn't seem to be anyone else alongside him. I don't know if his English is any good or whatever, but um, if it's not good, at least we've got Jefferson Lerma and Diego Rico who can help hopefully sort of father him through the period. Yeah, definitely. I think that's probably helped. Got a few there that have obviously come through and didn't know English or haven't played over here before and things like that. But yeah, it'll be like you say, there's no like actual translator there in the shot. So I don't know if he's you know, got grasp of English or not, but um, I'm sure they're, you know, aware of all that. But yeah, I think, I think the key thing as well, which I was uh, happy about, was the option to buy um, on the deal, which I really didn't expect, you know, especially with, like we said, the club's linked. I thought, oh, maybe it's just yeah. to get some game time and we'll probably never see him in, uh, you know, in the flesh with the, you know, with the fans not being able to go there. But the option to buy is a promising one as well. If he does perform, we can go and uh, snap him up. So that's a good one. And as I said on one of the videos uh, a couple of days ago, I wonder if he'll be one of these players like that just seems to sit on the bench and maybe doesn't get used um, or whether JT is willing to give him licence from the very off. I think maybe Coventry tomorrow might be a bit too soon for him, but um, he's an exciting prospect and what he does offer us is just a little bit of depth in an area where when a few players are injured we we do look short and Stanislas being not known whether he's going to be available tomorrow Brooks they're leaving last minute it it sort of underlines the need for players like this doesn't it yeah definitely like like I said at the start it's the um it's the probably the position you know I don't know exactly his um kind of style on that whether he's an inside winger you know that can kind of play in a 10 or you know we just know he's an offensive player which we definitely need more options like you say the players we do have are all Lots of quality, but have also got their injury concerns. Um, I think, having said that, if we don't see him for a while, that's probably a good thing because it probably means we're still winning and we don't want to change too much. Do you know what I mean? So it's, you know, I probably don't want to see him too quickly because that means we're trying to change everything. But um, it's a shame he didn't come in right at the start of the window. We maybe could have played him in the cup games uh, to see what he was about. But I think for the time being, he'll probably come off the bench. We'll see the old cameo appearance. And um, yeah, and it will probably be the type of player that come on if we're chasing a goal or whatever. So, to be honest, if we don't... I'm not, I, he may make the bench, I think, depending on injuries for Friday. Um, like you said, Brooks seems to be last minute, Stalas last, last minute. Um, but we'll see. Like I say, if we're, if we're still winning and we don't see him, that's fine by me. But um, at least we've got him there. Like you say, that depth's really important. Yeah, and in terms of tomorrow, yeah, we're against Coventry City. Of course, it's, it's not in Coventry. It's at St Andrews, a ground that we've had uh, a lot of excitement and a lot of goals at. And um, earlier in the week, I spoke to Jeff Hayward to hear what he had to say ahead of this Friday's game. Jeff, Coventry City, it is a match on Sky on Friday night and travelling up full of confidence and hopefully bringing back home three points. Yeah, I think uh, I think we should be full of confidence. You know, we're unbeaten in the three games that we've played in the championship. Uh, we put in really good performances against Palace and Manchester City, and um, yeah, you know, certainly nothing to be afraid of. Coventry have um, have done reasonably well. You know, they've won one, drawn one, lost one. 
the game they lost was to Bristol City, who have won all three and look like they'll be one of the top sides in the division already. Um, and the team they beat was QPR, who um, who are not a bad side in this division. So, yeah, I think they'll be they'll be a challenge. That's for sure. JT, he's got some good headaches in terms of the fact that we can do 3-4-3, three, three, we can play this five across the midfield should we need to, and also potentially the return of players like Brooks and Josh King being fit, being fitter. There's options for him, isn't there? I think it's going to be interesting what he does with that starting lineup. Will he uh, swap out Don Solanke for Josh King? for example, maybe give uh, a starting berth to Josh for a change. Um, that could be a way to go. Or um, maybe um, maybe Junior will be fit and maybe he'll get a starting place. I mean, I quite liked those three central midfielders playing yeah. uh, against Norwich and it looked pretty solid and good if you're if you're... Um, if you're playing Lewis Cook in that kind of shielding role. Um, so maybe you'll go with the same formation, the same lineup. It's going to be an interesting one for him. So we go. Uh, that was Jeff's opinion earlier in the week. And uh, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting match. And in their last match, Tom, I think they, um, they drew nil nil with. Barnsley, and by the sounds of it, from looking on YouTube, it wasn't their best performance. Either they barely even got a shot on goal in the game. I think Leo Ostergaard hit the bar for him, but they didn't really look like scoring other than that. And yeah, as Jeff said, they've had a win, they've had a loss, they've had a draw, and yeah, 2-1 against Bristol City at Ashton Gates. Not overly bad. And to overcome Queen's Park Rangers 3-2 as well, um, you know, that's decent. They're going to be a challenge, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. It's quite difficult to judge, I think, um, because of the fact that when they won their game, it was 3-2. So you're thinking, oh, they're quite a free score inside. And then they drew nil-nil. So it's quite hard to, this early stage, to kind of judge what sort of an outfit they're going to be like. Um, they were brilliant last season um, in League One. And I thought they'd be quite competitive this season. So I think it will be a difficult game and it will be, it's hard to kind of know, to gauge what to get. I think the first three games... Uh, Blackburn, Borough and Norwich. They're three teams that I still believe will be in the months in amongst it, which, yeah. you know, is credit to us for how we did. I think they're three good sides. Coventry's a little bit more unknown. So um, I think we've just got to worry about ourselves. I think if we keep pretty solid, as we have been in the last few games defensively, but still causing teams problems like we have been, I think we should be more than confident. I think um, a few Coventry fans are, are getting a bit irate. Well, they got a bit irate after that last performance, which maybe shows you the levels that they want to compete at this mm. season. Uh, do you know anything about... Many or any of their players? Uh, not a great deal. I think they've got a lad called Godden, I think it is, up top, who seems to be their main goal threat. I know he scored a few this season already. Um, I think they've got a lad who used to be a youngster at Chelsea or something. I think it might be Dabo or someone um, who's supposed to be quite handy. But I don't know a great deal about them. Um, like I say, I think with them being in League One and stuff as well, probably and we were in the Premier League, it's kind of two leagues apart. But I think it's going to be quite a tight game. There's There always tends to be one team that comes up from League One that seems to be quite strong. And I did think it might be Coventry. They're uh, historically, I mean, I remember when I first kind of into football, they were in the Premier League in like 98 or something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's, you know, still a, still a decent sized club. It must be odd for them having not played in their own stadium for a while. But um, like I say, we're going to St Andrews, so we'll, we'll be fine because we love it there. <laughs> yeah. And I think on one of the previous videos I did with you, I said you said, in fact, that Coventry, in fact, uh, clip the card at the top of the screen because Tom did say that those exact words that Coventry will could be the surprise package uh, this season. But in terms of AFC Bournemouth, I think that you know technically player for player, I think we should be good enough, and hopefully we'll be on it um, from the off. So in terms of the eleven that we select, Tom, I'm going to turn to you to find out and predict our chosen eleven that we play now. I know that we've done 3-4-3 three, three for a lot of the um, season, but the 3-5-2 or 3-5-1-1, one, one, you could say, in the last mm. uh, match seemed to serve us well equally. So what do you think he's going to do this weekend? It's a difficult one um, because I think I wouldn't be surprised if he just went, we play well against Norwich, Norwich are a good side, we don't need to change anything if everyone's come through that okay. Um, I don't expect Kelly to be back, so 
That's one. I know he said St- Stanis has 50-50. Well, if he's 50-50, then he's only going to be strong enough for the bench, in my opinion. Sure. Um, Brooks is one that's only... he was It was an illness rather than an injury, so he might be okay to play. But then, you know, he probably hasn't trained as much as the others. So mm. even the players that we potentially have back, I think, would you rush him in when we got a good result? Probably not. The yeah. only one you could say is, um, like Jeff mentioned, uh, Josh King. Um, could potentially get a start. He looks like he's been training and stuff like that and will be ready to go. And the only other one I would say is the only player that I didn't feel was brilliant was Philip Billing. And you know you've got a really good player on the bench in Dan Gosling, which is a like for like in terms of that middle. So there's a few little things he can do, but I wouldn't be overly surprised if he went unchanged. I certainly think the goalkeeper and back three and wing backs will remain the same. I can't see that changing. Um, we've Travers is even a doubt anyway, isn't he? But yeah, um, yeah. I can't see after the Lawrence game in a clean sheet anything other than you know uh, Begovic and goal, uh, Rico, Cook and Mepham as the three, and then Stacey and Smith as the wing backs. Um, yeah. That I certainly can't see changing. I think as the the midfield, I think he will go with a three in in the midfield. Yeah, um, and I think he probably will. Stick with us. I, I probably would say Gosling over Billing, but I think he might stay the same. Right. Um, and I think he's going to go Lerma, Billing, and Lewis Cook. With Lewis Cook as that slightly deeper role, because I think yeah. it worked quite well. And it was the first time we've kind of seen it. So it'd be a bit odd for JT to give that a go. Think that worked. Right. Let's change it straight away. Do you know what I mean? So I, um, I could see that. And then, like I say, I wouldn't be overly surprised with Brooks or King, but I think he might stick with going down Juma. Just behind Solanke, I believe he'll go. Um, so yeah, I think that's what he'll probably do. Um, so yeah, kind of a five three one one, I guess. Was yeah, kind of what it was, wasn't it? Okay, so yeah, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to mm. put these players so in goal, then, Begovic. uh, yeah, Begovic, yeah, um, I agree with that because if that knock is still, you know, you don't yeah. know how well he's and Begovic had a good game in the last game, to be fair to him. That was the most yeah. comfortable I've seen him. Uh, so Chris Meppham, Steve Cook. And yep. uh, Diego Rico, right? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, sorry, across the midfield, you're going with what? Well, the wing backs on the right will be Stacey. Uh, yeah. So move them ones back. Yeah. So, yeah, left Smith, right Stacey. And then Smith on the uh, left hand side there. And then, yeah. Yeah, then throw in the middle, yeah. Okay. Uh, but, you know, Lewis Cook probably playing mm. a bit of a deeper role, which hopefully will give Lerma a bit more licence again. Yeah, and I think what I liked about it as well is we, you know, with this playing from the back approach, you kind of need that deeper midfielder to come and get give another option for the centre-half. So Lewis Cook is clearly our best player on the on the ball out mm. of our midfielders. So I quite like him, him coming deep and, and getting the ball. He seems quite, he's quite brave on the ball, quite confident to get, a, to get the ball and then, you know, pass it off straight away. So, and Lerma's got that energy. So, um, yeah, like I said, I wouldn't be overly concerned if I'd be more than happy if Gosling were to come in for Billing, but I I think he'll probably stick with that because that three as a whole did work quite well. Um, mm. So if it is going to be um, Dan Juma playing just behind, who goes up top then? Um, this, just the one. Of, mm. this, is the, this is probably one of the decisions that most fans are perhaps 50-50 on. Yeah, because I think you can argue... Obviously, King and Solanke, you can even argue Surridge. I mean, he's he scored in the, his last game he started um, and he's, he's looked quite lively. Um, I, I think he'll I think he'll stick with Solanke. I do think he'll um, he'll stick with Solanke. It's one that, I, yeah, I mean, I've, at the end of the day, Josh King's a class player. So if he started, I'll be excited. But equally, I think Dom hasn't been as bad as people say. He's missed a few good chances, but he's got himself in them areas. I think he's... Helped Dan Juma a lot. I think in the last game, Dan Juma was really feeding off him well. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think it will be the best thing from a managerial point of view to drop Solanke straight away. I think the key thing is what's happening with Josh King. I mean, he obviously is saying that he can trust Josh to put a shift in while he's still here because he brought him on in the last game. Yeah. But to drop someone like Solanke, who could end up being our key man, um, for someone who might go in a week. You're right. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit. It'll be a bit odd to, to knock someone's confidence like that and then rely on him in a, in a couple of weeks' time. So um, I think he'll go unchanged, but um, it'll be interesting because, like I say, if he doesn't, then the players that he could potentially bring in, Gosling, Brooks, King, I mean, it's not exactly a big downgrade. I feel they're all class players. <laughs> no. so to have them three all on the bench potentially is, is really exciting, along with, obviously, potentially Raquel May as well. 
Yeah, it's huge. And, uh, you know, I, I think you're right about Brooks. I mean, he had symptoms that were consistent with coronavirus and like fluey symptoms. And, you know, that that takes a lot out of you and he could be a bit fatigued. So it would surprise me if he went straight in. And, you know, Stanislas, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what the injury is, but, you know, he he proved himself in the early part of the season to be absolutely superb for us. And in preseason, especially, I just really hope that we can get a fairly consistent junior playing as well because he he can make a massive difference to us. So, yeah, um, King or Solanke, Tom's gone for Solanke. That is his chosen team there. So it's um, it's a sort of 3-5-1-1. Uh, what do you think? Let us know in the comments and uh, we'd love to know your team and uh, whether the formation you think is right or should we be kind of going back to that 3-4-3? Three, three? Um, in terms of your prediction, Tom, for, t- for tomorrow... Live on Sky, we'll have the fake crowd noises. It will be all very different, you know, HD, multiple camera angles. You know, can watch it on your TV at last. What are you, uh, what are you going for tomorrow? Because Friday night under the lights is quite a, quite a nice time for Bournemouth, isn't it? It always reminds me of um, that Fulham game at exactly, five one. Yeah. That was far. I just love That's that good. day. Um, oh, I'm going to go two 0 I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to keep guess. positive about the clean sheet as well. I think if we can get back to back clean sheets, that'll be a real big step as well for a team that predominantly we have struggled defensively. And I think that'll show that the new system they're getting used to it. So I really hope we can bounce back with another clean sheet. And yeah, I'm going to go with the kind of front two. I'm going to say Dan Juma and Slanky both to get on the score sheet. Uh, maybe a, a nice little third at the end for Raquel May as well. You never know. Oh, that'd be all right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm going. I think we've got goals in us. It, it showed. I mean, you know, QPR scored a couple against them. Mm. Uh, I think. I I think we'll notch uh, a couple. Yeah, you know, I'm going for three-one. So you know, same margin. Yeah. But um, I think I think we can win that three-one. And uh, yeah, Tom, cheers for coming on today, mate. Really Thank appreciate you, mate. it. Cheers. And, uh, yeah, we'll be uh, speaking to you very, very soon, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments then. Uh, team formation and prediction as well. Let us know. See you in the next video. The free for all is straight after full time. So be sure to join us. But also tomorrow morning, Tony Funnel, ex AFC Bournemouth striking legend, he's going to have his say as well on uh, this Friday's game. And also predict a Super Six, which reminds me, I must go and do that. Right. See you later on. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.